Well, thank you for the introduction and thank you for letting me be here today. Um, as you heard, my name is Emily Kimmy and I'm the Director of Development for Girl Scouts of Southern Illinois. Um, I have to say I've had fun already today. I really had a good time just kind of reminiscing and talking and turns out it's a small world. I grew up around here and we've had a lot of conversations at the table about people that we all know and places that we've been to. So it's been um, nice to be here with you uh, already. So what do you think of when you think of Girl Scouts? Cookies. Of course, cookies, absolutely. What else? Color green. The color green, all right, that's good. Camp outs. Camp outs. <laughs> Anybody else? Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, we have two sayings in our office right now. One is that we're more than cookies and camping. And the other one is that it's not your mother's Girl Scouts. So two topics that are coming up a lot with what we do. Now, related to we're not just cookies and camping, we are still those things though. So absolutely, cookies are an essential part of who the Girl Scouts are. Honestly, it is a big fundraiser for the Girl Scouts, but it's a program. It's something that the girls do. It's not actually what I'm responsible for in the fundraising department. It's a program with the girls. And we look at it as more than, again, just them selling. We actually look at the cookie program as a way that they can learn skills that can be used later on in life. So there are five areas that we look at when we do cookie sales with the girls. So we want them to look at goal setting, decision making, money management, people skills, and business <coughs> ethics. And even think about little girls, even with your brownies and your daisies, your five and six year olds, there is still something to learn with those girls. And we watch them go through the, the, the changes and things that they learn with the program. Even some of our own staff have <coughs> girls who are that age and are Girl Scouts. And our COO actually did a blog post for us talking about what she watched and witnessed with her own two girls. And that at the beginning of the program, <coughs> the way that they went out, um, the change in their confidence even, it is sometimes scary. Not Most people don't want my job. If I tell you you need to go fundraising, there are probably some of you that are okay with that, but there's probably a lot of you that are like, fundraising is not my thing. And that's what cookie sales are. They are going and asking other people to buy something from them. But those girls, when they do it and they practice it, they're practicing how to talk to somebody, how to do customer service, um, and just gaining, again, confidence in what they can do. So cookies are essential, they're important, they're a huge part of who Girl Scouts are, but they're more than just something that we sell. We really do try to make it something that the girls can learn from. That said, we always have cookies available, so, you know, um, we're, that's not going anywhere. And then also when we talk about, um, you know, our mission has not changed. So when you talk about who Girl Scouts are, our mission is to build girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. That doesn't change. That's still who we are and what we do. And Girl Scouts of Southern Illinois, we cover 40 and a half counties in Southern Illinois, so we have a very large territory. Um, it goes all the way up actually to um, Charleston and Effingham, which doesn't really seem Southern necessarily, but that's our territory goes all the way over there and then all the way down for the whole rest of the state of Illinois. So it's a big area. But specific to East Alton and to your area and, and what you're used to, I did um, check to make sure that I had some numbers for you so you can understand the impact that we have um, just right here in your area. So the service unit that East Alton is a part of, it also is comprised of Godfrey, Alton, Wood River, and Roxana. Last year, and this is our previous fiscal year, we're still in a fiscal year so we don't have final numbers, but last year we had 543 girls and 172 adult members from that service unit. So quite a few girls are part of Girl Scouts in this area. And the other interesting thing is, again, when we talk about what it is we do and why my job is important in fundraising is that it does cost money. And there are plenty of girls and even the adult um, volunteers who are helping them who can't afford to be Girl Scouts on their own. And so last year, again, in, in our past fiscal year, we had 69 girls and 17 adults in that, er, in that service unit that needed financial assistance. And it was over $1,400 that we used. And again, that's just the financial assistance to pay their membership dues and to get them the basic materials, the uniform for the girls, things like that, so that they can participate. And then you're talking about all the other costs associated with programmings and things like that. That's just the basic financial assistance and the amount of money it was for the, the girls in this area. So then again, something else that's still core, I mentioned camping. We do still do a lot of camping. We actually have six properties in our area, in our service area that we maintain. And so we have, um, right now, we're in the midst of camping season. We have lots of day camps going on. So chances for girls, again, to go and try new skills and new ideas out at day camps. But then we also have a residence. 
camp. So we have girls who will go and spend the night and stay for a week or two weeks at our camp in southern Illinois. It's um, Camp Butterfly in Macanda, Illinois. If any of you grew up Girl Scouts around here, you may have been there or may have remembered it. Um, it's still going strong, 60 year anniversary this year. And so we do have a lot of girls this summer who are spending time down there. Again, related to that though, it's not your mother's Girl Scouts, we're still doing the traditional things you think of that the girls are gonna learn. Outdoor <coughs> skills are getting to do archery and swim and, and try all the things, do crafts, all of that, um, still as part of camping. But we've also gone to the next level of what is it that girls today want and need to learn. And so they do things like geocaching and other science um, programming at these camps. So they're doing newer and updated skills training while they're at camp. Again, how do you make the fun also be learning for them? We always want them to have an outcome of something that they're going to learn as a part of their programming. And last year we had almost half of our girls. Um, we serve, again I mentioned the 40 and a half counties, we have 14,000 girls in our 40 and a half counties that are Girl Scouts. And of them, about half of them attended a program or attended camp last year at a camp. So the new part, when we talk about what's changed. Does anyone here know what STEM stands for? Science, Technology, Engineering. Yes, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Very good job. It's kind of a newer concept that not everyone has heard that term STEM. We use it a lot though, because when we look at what is it that we as Girl Scouts need to do for our girls, we have another, kind of our theme right now is to get her there. What does to get her there mean? Well, it means to get her wherever she wants to be. And that includes things like to the boardroom, where women are not represented in the same way, into those science and technology fields. I brought um, some statistics with me. Women only earn 25% of math and computer science degrees. So of all the degrees that are awarded in those categories, only 25% of them go to women. And only 20% of the engineering degrees. There's a big gap there. And the other research that we know, um, Girl Scouts of the USA does a great job in doing national research, research for us to help us to understand, again, what is it we're doing and what are the issues and, and what can we do to get girls where they need to be later on. And STEM is key to that. By fifth grade, most girls, the majority of girls, have already moved on from thinking about careers in STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. So we're trying to get to them before that age and then keep them going after that. And how are we doing it? With a lot of different types of programming. But one of the, the key ones and one that's something you can visualize and see and, and kind of, I think, understand is robotics, believe it or not. You might have heard of um, the first Lego League and the robotics teams that take place with that. There's also another program called Botball. And again, they're both programming. <coughs> programs. So with First Lego League, it's um, usually younger girls and they're using the Lego kits to build, and it's not just girls, it is um, boys do these programming too, but we're proud of our girls that are beating some of the boys in the area. Um, so these teams are formed, again, of grade school girls who are competing. Botball is different than the Lego League in that it's actually the C++ programming, so it's actual computer programming that these girls learn. So you're talking about fifth grade girls who are learning, or middle school girls who are learning the botball program. And in particular, one of, we had three botball teams this year. We're the only Girl Scout Council in the U.S. currently with botball. A lot of us are, a lot of counselors are doing the first Lego League robotics. We're the only ones doing the botball currently. So we're setting a national standard and kind of paving the way. Of our three teams, all three of them placed in regionals this year, including our O'Fallon team placed second and got invited to go to the national competition in Oklahoma next month. So again, great things are happening in Southern Illinois and with our girls. And I love what I'm doing with Girl Scouts and the chance to see girls as they grow and learn. And we have a first Lego League team of fifth grade girls in <coughs> St. Louis. And we had a chance recently to, have, to hear from them some of their stories about what it means to them to be doing robotics and what they're learning. And they're just adorable. And the things that they say are rather key though. They have aspirations now. One of them wants to be the first female president. Okay, again, we're all, you all live here, so you have an idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about students that are growing up in East St. Louis and likely what it is that they have available to them typically. One of the other girls, key thing that she said that I think can get missed on people is her comment when you talked to her about what she wants to do when she grows up and what robotics means to her. She says, when I go to college. Not if, when I go to college, these things that I'm learning will help me in college. And that just, again, it gives me chills every time I think about it. And 
Um, we've actually got video now of her that hopefully one of these days um, we'll have available to show to everybody where she says that, and that's when I get chills, is hearing her say, when I go to college. So that's the type of work that we're doing and why I get excited about what girls are continuing to learn and how we're able to help them.